So these different forms, I'm going to write down a theorem, which when you see it, you'll be like, oh, of course. Uh, but it is listed as a theorem in the book. So for completeness, we'll write it down. This will be a real no-duh theorem. So if the limit of the natural log of f equals l, then limit, so if we take away the natural log, this will be ln inverse of your original limit. <coughs> Which of course is e to the l. So. The reason I write ln inverse so often instead of always just going e to the l is just because it jogs your memory that the exponential function is the inverse natural log function. All right, why do I say this is a no-duh theorem? Yeah, it's a continuous function. So natural log is a continuous function. So here's the proof. I could push the limit through the natural log function. Uh, and we started out assuming on the left side that this was L, capital L. So on the right side, just going to copy this down. How do I solve for the limit of f of x, what I put in the box? How do I solve for that? How do I get the ln out of there? Uh, natural inverse. Yep, ln inverse both sides. So you could write it like this. I'm ln inversing both sides. And it's probably not worth writing ln inverse of ln. We know those are going to cancel, but I'll cancel them in the next step. So there's our proof of our theorem. Just use the continuous property you push that limit through. So not much going on in this theorem right here. So why would it be useful to take the natural log of a function? Well, what we've seen that do, we know this property, but what it's been useful for us is it lets us bring exponents out as coefficients. So it lets us turn exponential form into a product, basically. So the indeterminate forms that we're going to see so these are going to be new indeterminate forms. We could have 1 to the infinity power. So if you think about this one, well, what's 1 to any power? It's always 1. What's any number not 1? So if you have a number bigger than 1 to the infinity power, what's that? infinity and a small number will be zero assuming that it's not negative so here's the one number right in between so it's not zero it's not infinity it's indeterminate so that's why I have to do more work uh, the next indeterminate form zero to the zero power so normally raised to the zero power you get one except zero raised to anything almost anything is zero so is it zero or is it one or is it something else so here's another indeterminate form. You could see infinity to the zero power. So is this one? Anything to the zero power is one, except infinity raised to any power that's not zero is infinity. So this is somewhere, this is indeterminate. We don't know which of those it is. Uh, and either of these, you're going to apply ln because they're all exponential forms. So this will let us pull the uh, exponent down as a product and then turn it into L'Hopital's rule. So the indeterminate, is the indeterminate at least they can't be graphed either? Be well, <clears throat> so a limit, we have to be careful we say a, a graphing a limit because we probably, if, if I wanted to, so let me just write the first problem out and then I will, we'll, we'll go and graph it. 
uh, wait, so we'll graph it without the limit and we'll zoom in on the x value close to where we're going. That gets tricky at infinity because you can only zoom out so far and you have to say, that's good enough, I see the pattern. Uh, so we'll do our example and we'll graph this guy. Lim x approaches zero from positive side. So I think I, sh I said that this was, this was equal to E, but we never, <clears throat> I tried to show it, failed. Uh, but we are going to prove it using uh, L'Hopital's rule. So we're going to go ahead, naively, just plug in 0, uh, positive 0, see what we get. So 1 over positive 0, that is where our infinity comes from. So 1 over a tiny number, tiny positive number, is a really big number. So it's going to get bigger and bigger. So this is the uh, 1 to the infinite uh, infinity. Unfortunately, this is not at all L'Hopital's form whatsoever. So there's two ways to address this. Uh, one way, and I think this is the way the book problems are done, what we're going to do is just apply a natural log. So I'm just going to apply a natural log. <clears throat> what this is not equal to is the original. Because the function on the bottom, I applied a natural log to it. So if I want them to be equal, I'd have to apply an ln inverse as well to cancel out the natural log. So let's go ahead. So they are equal. Let's go ahead and apply an ln inverse as well. And now these are actually equal. So I applied a natural log inverse of natural log. So that doesn't change anything. Now the motivation is it lets me bring this exponent down as product. That was the reason we did that. So let's go ahead and do that algebra. So we're going to get a 1 over x times ln 1 plus x. So that was our motivation, was to get that form. So we at least don't have an exponent anymore. And now what I'm going to do is pass the limit through ln inverse function. So it's a continuous function, so I can pass the limit through. And remember, you can pass the uh, limit through any continuous function. Most of the functions we're going to deal with are continuous, so you can pass the limit through most of the functions that we deal with. Uh, the only time you really don't want to do it is if that x value would be a vertical asymptote. And then things get totally weird, so you can't pass it through if you don't have a continuous uh, function at that point. All right, so we're going to pass the limit through. Let's rewrite it now. So I know that this is going to be a L'Hopital's rule, um, eventually turn into L'Hopital's problem. So <clears throat> there is a very easy way to turn this into a fraction. We're going to write the 1 over x as a fraction like that. So this one was set up perfectly to write as one big fraction.
And now I'm gonna go to the right here. I'm actually gonna plug in zero. So we got ln one plus zero over zero. So that's ln inverse of ln one over zero and ln one is zero. So we're gonna apply L'Hopital's rule to basically the inside part right there. So we're gonna apply L'Hopital's rule. So what I just put a box around, that's what's telling me this is gonna be a L'Hopital's rule form. So I'm basically kind of ignoring that ln inverse until the very last step, then I'll apply ln inverse to the number we're gonna get. So L'Hopital's rule tells me that this is equal to the limit as x approaches zero on the positive side. Derivative of this natural log is one over that stuff multiplied by derivative one plus x, which is just one. So there's really no significant chain rule happening up there. And derivative of x is just one. Let's simplify this down. So our fraction is now just one over one plus x. And we should have no problem plugging in our limit value now. And ln inverse one, that's e to the first power, which is just e. Questions on what we did here? So you can choose to hold off the ln inverse, like you know, is there a customary way of dealing with the inside? So, oh, yeah, right. so, so basically, what your book does and, uh, and what other people will do is not have ln inverse anywhere down here, and then at the very last step, they'll say, ah, the limit is 1, this limit is 1. And the original limit is the ln inverse of this limit. So they use the theorem that we wrote down, and they get the limit of the natural log of f is 1. And so the limit of regular f is ln inverse of 1. So either way, you're going to get the same thing in the end. So it just depends on how you prefer to write it. You're doing exactly the same steps. So we're going to do one more example problem that's going to be uh, very similar to this one. So this is going to be x to the 1 over x power. So on these, you always want to just start out, just plug in infinity. Maybe I make a mistake, and it comes out with the limit being 0. And you can just say, oh, it's 0, and move on. You want to be very careful. If you get 0, it's probably very suspicious. It's probably too easy. 